We're going to get started for those who's late. Well, they are late and they're going to find us eventually. Hi, Yurata. My mother is here. <laughs> My biggest fan. No, I didn't see Aventura live. I can't believe I missed that, Jill. But I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I haven't seen it live, but I will find it and watch it not live. What are you going to do? Oh, New Jersey is here as well. Nora, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Okay, guys. Hello to everybody. A few things very quickly to get out of the way. Uh, first of all, I want to say hello to one of uh, the men that are in my channel all the time, and that's Igori. Now, the reason I want to say hello to him, because he's been really stressed lately. He's uh, been watching a lot of my videos, and he would find every mistake that I make, and he would leave a comment about it, which is fantastic for me because he keeps me checked, right? So yesterday, I think I said it's great wine, and actually it's great wine. And Igori almost lost his nerves, okay? In his comments, he was like sending links. How could you make such a mistake? Don't stress, Igori. Things are happening live. Sometimes I will say something that is not correct, but the teaching is excellent, I promise you. <laughs> My teaching is superb. Sometimes I might use a wrong word to describe what I'm doing. Please forgive me. I'm doing it live. But then afterwards, if I make a mistake, I fix it like I'm doing right now. So you got it. Make sure you drink some herbal teas. You relax your mind and you keep watching my videos. Keep commenting all of the mistakes that I do. Just, you know, don't stress about it. Comment like a normal human being. Okay. So now I got that out of the way. Oh, Leila, thank you for your early donation. So now that we have this out of the way, the other thing I need to say is this. If you're dancing on a carpet, uh, make sure you're going to be using socks, okay? Because we're going to be doing tents today. If you're dancing on a wooden floor and you're wearing dance shoes, that's fine. I'm wearing my dance shoes today with heels only because I want to make sure that I give you some tips when you dance with heels as well. So if you're practicing with heels on a wooden floor or tile, I'm going to give you some tips for that as well. But if you're dancing on a wooden floor with socks, this is what I need you to do now. Watch. There's a sock sock when you put the sock on you have to make sure this is my my foot okay you have to make sure that the sock is only on the both of your foot so it's half foot yes it's the zone one and the zone two zone three the heel you cannot have a sock on because what happens is when you're spinning you can slip and fall because it's really really surfacey yeah slippery yes if you're not on a carpet if you're on a carpet you're gonna be fine whatever but if you're on a wooden floor on tile, you have to have your heel exposed because then when you're turning, you after the turn on the ball of the foot, you usually put the heel down and that's what will stop you from actually falling over. Does that make sense? So make sure you have that ready. Marisa, <laughs> donating as well. Thank you so much. Hi, Karina. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, thank you, Sheila. Okay, now we have the sock situation hopefully ready. If you have your dance shoes, hopefully you get ready with that as well. And today, as I say, we're gonna focus all about the tents. Normal tents in a basic and normal tents forwards and backwards. And we're gonna learn how to style it with our arms. But before that, we're gonna do a warm up. And the warm up, we're gonna be basing all of what we did last week. So we're gonna start with the normal basic. Then we're going to do figure eight basic. Then we're going to do the Dominican basic and we're going to do it all with our arm styling and we're going to do it forwards and backwards as well. After that, somewhere in the middle of the song, we're going to stretch a little bit and then we're going to continue with the actual class. If you haven't been last week and this is your first week with me, make sure after today you go back and you watch that video because we had a lot of information on the basics then. Okay. So hopefully you're ready, get yourself ready, and we're going to start. Oh, Eva, thank you for your donation. <laughs> you, ladies, you are efficient. Okay, let's get it started. So I'm going to play a song that's actually been requested. Romeo Santos y Lito. Magda requested it, so she's getting it. <laughs> 
I hope Martha is here because I'm playing the song for her. Okay, so on the spot. One, two, one, two, one, two. Get ready? Basic step. And normal bass. Keep going, keep going. With the hands. Always in arm to the foot. Keep going. Alright, take it Okay, now even if you know the basic 10 steps, I think today you're gonna learn a little bit different technique than you used to. And I will first just quickly let you know why. So originally bachata, it comes from Dominican Republic. What happened is the first people who brought bachata to Europe were most of them, I don't know all of them, but most of them were salseros. There was no bachata in Europe. So they brought the bachata. They couldn't do the proper Dominican bachata. So they adapted the basic steps that we know now and they incorporated a lot of salsa moves into bachata. And that's why it became bachata moderna, what we know now is all of these 10 combinations. That's why a lot of the times you can go to a class and if you know salsa, you recognize a lot of the combinations because 
they've been adapted through salsa. That's how Bachata Moderna was born. So it's no surprise that a lot of the technique that we use for dance is based a little bit on salsa. Now what happened is now with all the central trend, there's a lot of dancers who never dance salsa, but they now dance bachata. And they come up with new rules <laughs> and new ways to, to, to turn, which is exactly the same as before, but different techniques. What does that mean? That the turns usually, if it's taught by somebody who never danced salsa, the turn techniques that they usually teach are not, um, is, I'm trying to be politically correct, it's not the best way to give yourself speed or to get yourself to turn more. It's more just based on one turn or the other turn with no exciting maneuvers, right? But then if you watch dance videos, like bachata dance videos, you will see profe <laughs> ambulance. You will see professionals actually doing a lot of spins on the spot. And then when they're teaching, they're saying, oh, there's no double turns or whatever in bachata. It's all nonsense. There's as many turns in bachata as you want. People who say there's not a lot of turns in bachata and don't teach a lot of turns in bachata are usually the ones who are not salsa dancers. You know what I mean? So they think that a salsa dancer dancing bachata is, is not... I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain to you. Everything has a history. Everything is based, it, it appeared from somewhere. So whoever says bachata is bachata and it has its own technique, well, first bachata had salsa technique. And only then, now somebody is inventing different technique. Okay? So what I'm going to teach you, I'm actually a salsera. So the tense I'm going to teach you is the tense that you actually use in the partner work to help you turn faster, to give you an opportunity to style. Because when you turn faster and you're more stable with your tense, you actually have more numbers left to actually play and do some sort of syncopation step or something else. So hopefully, you will enjoy the tense that I'm going to do with you. So let's get it started. Enough of me waffling. All right, so now, usually when we turn, we decide we're gonna whether turn to the right or we're gonna turn to the left. And there's three steps and tap for the turn, okay? Now in bachata, because our basic step for bachata moderna, bachata sensual is to the side, that means when you are turning, you are always supposed to travel to the side. Because usually you're dancing with your partner, so you have to match whatever he's traveling. Does that make sense? So we usually don't want to be turning on the spot. It's really hard to turn on the spot. It's much easier if we actually turn while traveling. Okay? So now, we immediately start the turn on the first step. So if I start with my right leg, I immediately start my turn, right? So I don't take a step to the side and then try to pivot. I actually open already and then I start pivoting. So I already start my turn before I turn. So I prepare that turn and then my next step is going to be literally sideways. And then after I took that step sideways, I don't put it down. I actually put it down and pivot. So now when I'm pivoting, my legs are about to cross. So not letting them cross, I'm gonna take my right leg and immediately open to the side. And of course there's a tap in the end. So it sounds complicated, but it's the same as you used to do. It literally is side, 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 and tap. Now, how does it differ from what usually you might hear? Usually, um, People say that by three, you're supposed to see the center. One, two, and three. What I want to do is see the center before three. So watch what's going to happen here. One, two, three. Already on two, I can see. One, two, three. Does that make sense? So my turn is much quicker. I spot, and in the end, when I'm taking that last step, it's a straight step to the side. A lot of the times when you're turning, you turn it and that last step is somewhere here. It's too small. The guy will already have passed you, right? 
So what we want is to take that last step to the side a little bit more efficient. So basically, what we're going to practice now is to prepare for the 10 immediately, then to make sure that we accelerate on two to see where we are on two, one, two already to see, and that cross leg immediately on three to go to the side. So imagine if on three, you already facing there and not actually continuing to turn. That means and four and five, whatever, you are free to do something with your other leg. I hope you're with me. Let's try. Slowly. Five, six, seven, go. Four, three, two, four. Now we're going to the other side, opening. Five. Step six, look, seven, and eight. One more time. And one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and five. Six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. How are you feeling? Every time I ask you something, if I don't see any comments, I'm just going to keep moving on. So if something's not working, you got to let me know, okay? Um, make sure if you're wearing heels especially, take really, really small steps. The biggest step you're going to take is probably in the end that side step. That's probably going to be your biggest step. But overall, when you're turning, you want to keep it tight. Tight, tight, bigger. Tight, tight, bigger. We're still traveling sideways. We're not turning on the spot. But it's small, small, bigger. Small, small, bigger. Does that make sense? Alina, all good. Good, good, good. When you turn, do you use the front part of your feet or flat? Always on the ball of the foot, okay? So the ball of the foot is not the toes. It is the front of your, <laughs> your foot, but it's not the toes. Is you know that that fat part after the toes, that big lump here, the biggest one on your foot, the one that gets the most uh, uh, disgusting? <laughs> that's, the, that's the part. You got it. You can comment now again on my bad language. So um, that part. So we are turning on the ball of the foot. The heel is not on the floor. But as soon as we're finishing our turn, we put the heel down, the legs slightly straighten. When we're turning, the knees are soft. That's what makes it easier to turn. Everything is soft. But as soon as I finish my turn, my knees straighten a little bit to tap, and then I continue. All good, all good, ha, 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 got it, excellent. Okay, so one more time. Five, six, seven, we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Six, seven, eight, and one. Two, three, four, and five. Six, seven, eight. Now, we're going to do exactly the same turns, but we're going to go backwards and forwards with the turn, okay? Again, if we're going backwards, we're traveling with the turn backwards. If we're going forwards, we're traveling with the turn forwards. Now, what's going to change? When you're going backwards, you're going to need to prepare. And when you're going to go forwards in an angle, you need to prepare. So if I'm going basic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So before my turn, I actually slightly open. And then I'm going to turn. When I finish my turn, if I'm going to turn immediately to the other side, can you see I already angled again to turn? Angle to turn, angle to turn. And we are still traveling in a line, forwards and backwards. Let's try. Five, six, just a basic back. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I am ready to turn. One, pivot. Two, and then it's a step back. Three, 
and tap. So now I'm in an angle, perfect. I'm going forward, 10, backwards, 10, forward, and tap. So it's the same thing, the last step is the most important step. The last step cannot be a 10 still. The last step has to be a step back or a step forward. So make sure you turn quick enough on these other two steps, on the one and the five. Okay, one more time. Five, six, seven, go back. One, two, three, four, and five, six, ten, and one, two, step and tap. Five, six, step and tap. Basic two, three, and four. Here we go. We ten. One, two, three, and tap. Five, six, seven, and tap. One, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, and eight. Are you with me? Still alive? All good? My mother, my mother wrote Yurate. Yurate is my mother. She wrote. I got it. Thank you. So if my mother got it, I hope you all got it. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to quickly do it with the music into the side and into the back, okay? But please make sure you really focus on that technique. The last step to the side, keep your knees soft, turning on the ball of the foot, spot for as much as you can and prepare as much as you can, okay? Um, one more piece of advice I'm going to give you. When we're going to start doing the arms after the song, Sometimes you, after doing one turn or the other a little bit faster, you will not feel comfortable to tap legs together. It's much easier to tap legs apart, okay? So watch what I mean. Sometimes I'll be turning, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you see my legs? They are open. Now, why is this happening? Because if I collect my legs, that means I am killing my momentum. So if I'm doing one turn and I'm going one, two, three, four, I'm ready to go for my basic. But if I want to go one turn after another, usually I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I have momentum. After that first turn, I leave that leg here, my body is angled, so I'm using the same momentum to go to the other side. If the song is like super duper slow, you might not do it, but if the song is fast, that opening of the leg is really cool. And it actually does the same backwards and forwards. So if you're going into the backwards, one, two, three, it's open, five, six, seven, it's open. And then you continue. Does that make sense? So when you tap, it's kind of like it closes momentum, yes? If you keep it open, that means you can continue with the momentum a bit more. Sometimes we do it just because of styling, not even momentum. So I might be going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Does that make sense? So the leg open could be just styling, not even momentum. But for momentum, it's even better. That's genius. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I'm smart cookie. Okay, let's try with music, okay? So if you find the music a little bit faster, remember to open. To be honest, just for practice, it's nice to open as well. Let's try. Let us try. See what happens. Let's go. 
today I don't know when are you gonna learn how to turn how are you feeling is it happening have you tried with the leg open does it make sense how after momentum it helps you to stop and go for another one and then how when you collect the top you're ready to go into your basic it feels like there's no more 10 loving it excellent Susan anybody else loving it <laughs> or it's just me and Susan yeah <laughs> All good, excellent. Is it the same style of turns for bachata dominicana? No. In Dominican bachata, traditional. If we're talking traditional Dominican bachata, there is no turns. Um, it's only turns on the spot. Dominican bachata turns take eight numbers to go around. So instead of four numbers, it's eight. So Dominican turn would be something like this. And it's on the spot. In Dominican turn, we don't travel. So it would be one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, and three. It's called a slow turn on the spot, and it takes minimum eight numbers, sometimes more, to uh, go all the way around. It's a turn on the spot. And also traditional bachata doesn't necessarily, it's not based on this basic step. Traditional bachata usually is based on a box step, or it's based on a back and a forward step. So it's a little bit different. This is specifically for bachata moderna and for bachata sensual. Not traditional Dominican bachata. <laughs> Magda, I love my one-on-one -on -one lesson. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, so now, time for the arms, okay? We're going to use one particular arm, but there's going to be two different exits. And then when you're going to turn backwards and forwards, you're going to use the same technique, only one arm at a time. Diona, thank you so much for your donation. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Okay, so now, in bachata, arms are very similar as salsa. Then we just put a little bit of a different flavor, but the technique is the same. So in salsa, we're going to be practicing the same arms as well, just slightly different flavor. Now, the arms are going to go from the center all the way up. Okay? Now, how you collect 
when you bring the arms up is so many different options. That's why it's called styling. So you can collect like this, like this, like this, like this, many different ways. I would prefer for now, if you would do the same as me, uh, I am definitely not here to tell you what to do, okay? But you have to collect in the end. So in general, most of arms that's going to come up is going to happen through the center of your body. So literally where your tatas are, in that center, that's where it's going to start, literally here, okay? It doesn't start here or somewhere here. So what you can do is this immediately into your preparation. I tend to, if you notice, bring the arms in and then swing them. So I do sometimes, not always, depends on my mood or like how I feel, but I tend to prepare before I prepare. So then you get the extra movement in the movement. So it's not just one, you have the collect and then prepare, okay? But that's an extra. In general, center. We find a center. Now, wrist, get used to bachata. Always, you need flexible wrist and you need to be relaxed. Fingers nice and relaxed, no tension. In salsa, we sometimes have a bit more different position with tension. But bachata, forget about it, okay? There's no tension at all in the wrist. Look, it's almost like dead, okay? There's some engagement in the middle finger, sometimes index, but... In general, it's just relaxed. So now, if it's relaxed, we go to our center, okay? And now, we swing the arms down. Now, as soon as they're down, if you notice, they're gonna be coming up, but they're gonna come up from as far backwards as possible. And when I'm gonna come back to the center, wow. Now, the collection from the center, <laughs> I'm gonna be bending my knees. Collection, look, I'm here, arms collecting, and then pow. Now this one, I just close my fingers. I don't tense again, there's no tension. I just close my fingers. And this arm, look, I'm holding. You can't see my thumb, so I'm not holding like this, yes? There's no thumb. It's just gentle embrace. Now, the rule is this, that the connection in your arms is supposed to be the center of your head. So if your arms are past the center, it looks like this, can you see? And when you turn, it's going to throw you off balance. If your arms in front of you, it looks like this, right? So then it seems like these elbows are in front of your face. And if you're dancing with another human being, you're going to elbow somebody, okay? So the safe position is always when you're bringing your arms up, center. So if you can't see your elbows when you're looking straight, you probably are okay. If you can see your elbows, it's not good, right? So keep your core engaged. And let's try that one more time, okay? I'm gonna do your version. So we go through the center. We push the hands back as much as we can. And collection. One more time. And we go through the center. Up and collection. One more time, one more time. Let me, let me put my glasses on so I could see myself in the screen what I'm doing. One more time. We go through the center. Back, up, collect. As I say, collection is just one of the options, but it'll be easier to turn at the moment, okay? So now, if you want to do the extra swing, you can. The extra swing literally is as if we want to take two wrists together. So if you're a bit more advanced dance and you want to try that, you can. So you bring that wrist in and then through the center look, it prepares. So you kind of roll them in before you roll them out. But that means you gotta be quick because this is gonna happen through the basics. So if you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, and four. Do you know what I mean? So if you are doing this version, don't sleep. <laughs> Start earlier. But if you're doing a normal version, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm already on eight. I want to be in this position. So then you have one, two, three, by four, connection. If you're not connected by four, your arms will be flying and connecting while you are turning. 
Okay? Would you like to put that in practice? I hope so. Okay, so slowly. We're going into the basic, normal basic. Remember, on eight, you should already be there. Okay? We don't start on one. This is our eight as a preparation, and only then one. Okay? Let's do it. Five, six, seven, basic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Prepare the center. Now we push. One, two, three, and four. Connection by four. Again. Five, six, seven, basic. And one, two, three, four. And five, six, prepare and go. One, two, three, and four. So now, once we're here on four, we can actually turn. Your arms supposed to remain exactly the same all the way through the turn. Five, six, seven, eight. Now, the arms are going to go down your head into a neutral position. Okay? So now, once we're here, the arms go back, open, and behind your head, down through your chest, neutral position, where you can do your circles again, right? So one more time, from here, you have down your head and neutral. Now, I'm going to say something. Oh, Leila, silly question. Do you always hold your wrist with the same hand or do you change depending on the side you're turning? Um, I do the same arm, Leila. I don't think that's a rule, by the way. Just so you know. I don't think it's a rule which arm is going to hold which direction. So I don't think that matters at all. But me personally, I just figured it out now. It doesn't matter which direction I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the same arm. Maybe because I'm just used to it. But it really doesn't matter. Um, blah, 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 what I wanted to say to you guys. Oh, okay. Preventing mistake before it happens. Um, a lot of the times when we do a comb over, a lot of the women I see doing this. Yes? If you pretend you're touching your head, it always looks really, really weird. Okay? It seems like you're really scared to touch yourself. So even if you have like your sleek hair and you don't want to mess it up or anything, then it still kind of glides through, even if it's an illusion. It doesn't have to be, yes? You don't need to take your scalp off, but you have to actually touch. Because what happens with bachata, we want the natural style. We want everything to seem like, oh, it just happens and it's all so nice and beautiful. But I didn't mean it. That's the whole idea, yes? <laughs> Whatever your inspiration is. But in order to make it look natural, you are supposed to actually do it. So like if I would say to you, you have to do styling from down up with your hand, you have to actually imagine that you want to stroke that arm down the side. It's nothing sexual or anything, and it's the same here. It's not like, oh, look at me, you know? It's all about intent. No, you're just brushing your hair and you're putting the hands down. And if you do so, your elbows naturally, can you see? Naturally, they're going down instead of doing the up motion and then trying to position yourself. Just naturally let them go, and you will have your own natural positioning, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay? So, one more time. Five, six, seven, basic, one, two, three, prepare on eight, six, seven, eight, one, two, we ten, and five, six, seven, over, one, two, three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight. Now, exactly the same, but to the other side. So we're going to start with the basic, one, two, three, basic, five, six, still basic. Now on four, prepare and raise. Five, six, seven, ten. One, two, three, four, over the head. And one, two, and three. So basically, depending which side you're gonna turn, you're gonna whether prepare on eight, or you're gonna prepare on four. So the time when is your pause, 
That's the time when you prepare. Yeah? Jordanka! Hello, oh, thank you so much for your donation. I appreciate it <laughs> very much. So now, we're going to try and do it a little bit faster with the music, okay? And then we have to move on to do the back and the forward, because I'm afraid I'm going to run out of time. So remember, eight or four, okay? When you are turning, it's very important that you raise the hands, the connection up, but then you push the shoulders down. If you raise and you push at the same time, not only you have a beautiful position, but that tension here is what's going to keep you as well. <laughs> Hopefully it will keep you better than me. Is what's going to keep you also um, engaged when you are turning, right? So you have this engaged all naturally, your core, but then from here, this as well positioning is going to keep you in place. The moment this relaxes, it starts going around your body, and this is when you're going to be losing balance. And also, let's be honest, if you do it with the intention, it just looks like you mean more business. <laughs> it looks more sharp, okay? So keep that in mind, and let's try with the music. And then you can ask questions, of course. Of course. Of course. On the spot. Five, six, seven, basic one. On eight, here we go. On four. And ten. On eight. On Okay, 
If you're okay, we keep moving on, okay? Because we have 10 minutes, and in 10 minutes, we need to learn the back and the forward. We have to do it. We have to brush through it. So just give me a little thumbs up if you're okay. We want the basic not to be wide. The basic is small. The basic step is small. I do sometimes very big steps because I have very long legs. <laughs> and then I just, I take really big steps, but the basic always very small, always small. And when I'm teaching, I want you to see. So I always take a bigger step, but take small step. The smaller the step is, the actual, the more movement you're gonna get. So small steps is definitely better. And through the 10 as well, the 10 is small. It's just the last step a little bit bigger. When you're turning, it's the last step. The normal 10 is like normal two steps are normal, but the last step is a little bit bigger. I hope that explains uh, page and four. <laughs> Marlena, thank you for your donation. Thank you, sweetie. Could you just explain the timing for the spotting really quickly, like when you flick your head round? Okay, so the flick of the head, think about two. Okay, for example, so if I'm going one on two, I'm going to flick my head. Two. Yes? If I'm going there, five, six, I flick my head. I go five, I flick six. So literally, what happens is when I flick my head, I'm looking here, and now I try through the other side, to look again. Yes? I look here, I threw the other side, my body's going, and then when my body already went, only after, I flick the head as well. So when you flick the head, don't try to flick it so much that it sends you off balance, uh, puts you off balance. Try to flick the head only so that you would see yourself coming after the turn. So you start the turn, you can see yourself, and you can see yourself before you finish the turn. So the head is the last one to actually leave, but the first one to, to come back and the body finishes last. The body goes first, but finishes last. The head stays first and then finishes first. Oh, does that make sense, Hannah? I hope, I hope it did make sense. Uh, what dancing with the partner when you would... When dancing with the partner, when would we do this? Oh, the arms, guys, this styling with the partner, he actually flicks the hands um, for yourself. So you'll be dancing with him and he will do this. One, two, three, and four. And on the hip of the arm, he would actually give you a 10. So his arms would go inside your arms and he would flick them. That's when you would raise them up. And then on the hip, he would give you a 10 and then you would turn. And then when he puts his hand back into the frame, you go into the frame, yes? Or if he shows his hand, this is when you can go through here into his hands. So this is when you would do that kind of styling. I hope that explains it. Page of floor. <laughs> Page of floor. Okay, so now, without further ado, we are doing the back and the forward turn. And these arms, again, it's not the rule that this is supposed to be these kind of arms for these turns. But I want to do it because we use this kind of arm styling in a partner work, like she asked the um, Beja Flor uh, before, okay? So we use this arm, it's really important for the partner work. In slightly different positioning, but this is a perfect practice. So what's gonna happen now? Instead of preparing, we actually gonna be turning while raising the arm. So it's gonna be a little bit trickier for the balance, okay? So as soon as I'm going basic, one, two, three, forwards and backwards, right? Backwards and forwards. I prepare, look, my hand still goes through the center and then I'm gonna raise it all the way up, but I do it while I'm turning. And then I relax the hand here. Then when I'm gonna go forward into the turn, the arm again through the center, it swings up into the turn, okay? So, do you usually drop slightly on the count on eight? No. On the eight, I drop when I make a dramatic suggestion in the music. So, if the music goes ta -ra -ta -ta, ah, so usually I go ta -ra -ta -ta, ah, ra -ta 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 -ta. So, no, the drop is me improvising the music. 
which you can do, but not every single time. So let's try. So the arm, first just focus on the arm. It goes through the center, pushes back and up. Now here, very important if you notice, it's very straight, yes? We don't want this bent arm because we're going to be using this in a partner with this arm. And usually this arm we are practicing because we use it here. When he positions us in central bachata, when he's behind us, and then he does body movement. So this arm becomes a preparation through the ten. Make sense? So that's why we're using it now to practice it through the ten. So you have to make sure that because it's used in the partner work all the time, it's straight. Look, through the center, I'm opening my shoulder. Can you see? I'm opening that shoulder and then rotating it, keeping it up. And then afterwards is the same comb over as we did before, just with one hand. And it's the same now here. I'm going to go through the center, rotate back and up, and then down the head it goes again. Got trapped with my bracelet. So now, why are we opening the shoulder and slightly the body? Because if we don't, our shoulder doesn't go that far. So this is, it looks like, it looks not very pretty. But as soon as we are opening, can you see, you can't see my arm. And that's the beauty of it. So that it rotates as if it hasn't rotated. But the moment you don't open your shoulder and you're doing this, the arm is not, you know, you're not a contortionist. <laughs> Oh, what is the word? You don't, you don't work in the circus. So, unless you do. Um, so the arm is there and you can see it moving. It's just not as nice. But as soon as you're opening that shoulder and you can't see that arm, it's magic, right? So we're going to use that rotation while we are turning, okay? So we're going to start with the basic backwards. Five, six, basic step. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, remember eight, it's the preparation. So have your right leg uh, and your right arm next to your center, okay? So now that's the arm that is opening at the same time when you're turning. Raise it as soon as you can to finish that turn on the side and relax the hand through your hair. Continue the basic step. Now go back on one, two, on four. Or the other arm is prepared, your left arm. So now the left arm is going to swing and we're going to use that momentum to turn. We bring the arm up as soon as we can and through the head it goes. Okay? And one more really, really important point here with the arm. Don't just do the arm. Use the arm to help you to turn. Use the arm to help you to turn. So don't disconnect the two things. The lift of the arm can actually help you turn. Okay, one more time. Five, six, seven, go back. One, two, three, and four. Now prepare on eight and go. One, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven, now prepare on four. And go. Six, seven, and one, two, three, and four. Does it make sense to you? Say yes, and then we do it with the music. The whole thing. But this is such a good arm to practice. It's really, really important. And the fact that you're using it to go through the turn, it's really, really good to practice the balance. But it also shows you how important it is to spot, right? Because if you're doing the arm and getting that momentum and you do not spot, you get a bit flustered. So make sure you keep spotting so that you would know <laughs> with the momentum where to go forwards and backwards. When the other arm, Leila, that's a good question. When you're using one arm, the other one look is by my side. Yes? So if I'm using this arm, the other one is by my side. If I'm using this arm, the other one is by my side. I always say, you know, like where there's a belt, we kind of go like this, or like pockets, right? So you don't want to keep your arm here because it's just, it's in, it's in a way. 
So what we want, if we're exaggerating this up, we want the other one to be resting. It's never resting like this. We always want that elbow to be back. And it's kind of it's next to your body, but then you can see a little bit of the side. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the bum, but it's just resting. So if I'm doing this arm, it's resting here. If I'm doing this arm, it's resting there. Can you please explain the spotting once more? <laughs> Sure, of course, been struggling for years, no. So if I'm going backwards, look, my body is going, but I'm spotting you. That's what's spotting, that's how we start. We never want to start turning like this. Make sense? So I'm turning and my head is there. Now, when I'm turning again, my head, I can't keep it there. So it's gonna be the first one to go around. Can you see? I see you again through the corner of my eye before my body, and only then my body went. So basically, spotting is when you move your body, then your head, and then is the body, right? So if I'm turning, I'm looking, I look again before I finish my turn. Same here. I'm looking, look, my body's still there, and then I flick my head, and I find the spot again. Nice and gentle, no tension, chin down, and just you have to spot from one direction to another, but the, at the same, same spot. I hope that's helpful, Susanna. We can do more spotting a little bit later as well. Okay, so now we're gonna do it with the music because we're running out of time. So we're gonna do both turns, okay? Normal turns to the side with the arms, and normal turns back and forwards. Good luck. And after we finish this song, then you can ask all of your final questions, but at least I'll be at peace. We did what I wanted to do today. Again, so little, but very, very important, I think. Okay. Let's go from the top. My group of beautiful ladies. From the top. Let's have a romantic song. Oh, Steve Michaels, <laughs> thank you for your donation. Oh, from your girlfriend. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, on the Let's go. 
so much for your donation i really appreciate it okay ladies officially the class is over and the salsa will start in 15 minutes salsa styling so if you want to join salsa as well you can if you don't i'm so happy you were here um but i'm gonna stay here for five more minutes so if you have any questions you can ask me now and uh, we can have a conversation but officially we've finished i've joined you today how do I make a donation? <laughs> Dominique, if you'd like to make a donation, um, there is a little dollar sign um, on your right-hand side, up, there's a dollar sign, and there's also a dollar sign near the comments. When you press that dollar sign, you can make a donation. Okay, guys, um, one more thing I'm gonna say. Um, the fluidity of arms, okay? It happens um, through time. So you can't, no matter what technique you're gonna learn, your arms are not gonna move the same. You have to stretch your shoulder blades, you have to stretch your wrists. It has to be a constant process. And then the whole point is that everything is happening, like nothing is happening, you know? So it's all fluid and, and it's, wrists are moving and the fingers with the technique, but it's all supposed to be fluid. And that's what makes it look natural and it, it looks really, really nice. So that takes time, okay? So when you practice, always remember, it doesn't necessarily look the best because it just hasn't been worked hard enough yet. So just be patient with that. But the most important thing is to remember the technique through the center. Anything that goes through the center, you see, it already has that preparation. So if you keep this tight and you nice and relax in your breathing and you're bringing those arms like this, can you see? It's already nice, whether it's to the side. Anything that comes through the center, it just already has a really nice preparation. So it's a very, very good start. Oh, Hannah, thank you for your donation. Dominique as well, and Yukomita. Oh, thank you very much, Yukomita as well. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, Karina, <laughs> thank you. But um, the center is important. The other thing is, look what happens when I do my arm here. Can you see how I am not just leaving it there, I'm actually making it longer. And the length happens through here. So as soon as I'm finishing my arm, look, the length of the arm, because I stretched, and that's again what makes it a bit more special. So those little things are really important to add on, you know, when you're dancing, arm and then, stretch stretch but not arm up because the shoulder comes up so the shoulder needs to be relaxed not to kill the neck but the stretch happens from here look can you see and we lengthen everything because core is raising so everything becomes a bit more longer yes and every time i do arm styling even if it's nice and relaxed i feel every movement going through my arms through the shoulders through everything Nice feeling, I feel it, but it has to be worked hard. So center, length, position, make sure center through your head, yes? And make sure you practice the turn, quicker turns through the bachata basic steps because we're gonna do so many cool stuff with those turns. And I promise you one thing, nobody can take away from you if you do those good turns, is those turns. 
because you know there's so many women who do beautiful styling and they do body movement and the arms and everything and then they dance with the guy look guys talk to me <laughs> i am the teacher they come to me and like wow she feels so heavy and she looks beautiful you would look at her in a dance floor she looks stunning beautiful she feels heavy he says it's because of the 10 techniques yes they focus so much on the styling that when they actually turning and stuff the tens are heavy. So the most important thing is to fix your feet, to fix your tens, to fix your spotting. And then the arms and everything else is like an extra accessory, but it means so much more because you actually will be dancing at some point with another human being. Yes? So hopefully those little tips are helpful. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. I most certainly did. And we did the tens today. So now you know a little bit more about your basic basic terms as well and we're going to do something amazing next week as well oh and as well thank you alina and annie for your donations really appreciate guys this class is free it's all based on donations so hopefully for those who can't afford classes can enjoy this too oh the shoes you like my shoes um thank you my shoes are actually from reina and um, I, will, I will send you a little message um, afterwards, but this is basically reina.com and they are stunning shoes. Um, they have so many different kinds and actually I'm gonna have one pair to give away as well. So stay tuned. There's gonna be a little competition and you can get a pair as well. But it's reina.com and their shoes are spectacular. They're extremely expensive. So if you want to get these shoes, I have it, um, I'm sponsored by Reina. So I can get discounts. So go to reina.com. If you find the shoes you like, let me know and I'll give you a discount. I'm going to also write it in the comments down below after this video is done as well with the discounts as well. So let me know. Okay. Well, I'll let you rest for a couple of minutes if you're coming back for salsa and we're going to continue. But if I'm not going to see you in salsa, I hope you're going to come back next week on Sunday because it's progressive learning. So we're going to keep doing more interesting stuff. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate for all your donations and hope to see you in Salsa or maybe next week. Bye for now. Yes, reina.com. And let me know if you want, just write me a message and I'm going to send you the code. I think it's my code is actually Rasa something something. Rasa the dance or dance with Rasa. I think the code is dance with Rasa. I'm going to check for you, okay? Thank you guys very much. And Carolina, thank you so much for your donation. I'll see you soon.